Colossians chapter 1. I want to start off with verse 18. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. Let me have a word of prayer. Our precious Father, we thank you, God, for how great thou art. We thank you for the privileges, again, that we have in this country. And Lord, help your children to see how important prayer is. Lord, men shall always pray and not to faint. And Lord, people are fainting and the love of many will grow cold. And, and Lord, that you would just work in a magnificent way and, and show your children the truth and that they will hear what the Spirit says to the churches in Jesus' name. Amen. It says in verse 18, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Preeminence is first place. It means what is between you and God right now? We can say, oh, nothing. Really? Just stop and think for a moment what you face today. Do we really cast all of our cares upon him for he careth for us? <laughs> Have you looked at the missionaries' prayer letters lately? We were praying. Do you realize most of the missionaries are going through struggles in the Philippines? Is it four missionaries that were on that list or three missionaries from the Philippines? Do you realize that the government in the Philippines has a lockdown? You can go out of your house once a week, only one person, and they literally lock the door. What do we live in today? Uh, how much do we have freedoms? I know you struggled with your governor. Did they lock you in your house that you could go out once a week? There are missionaries, 40,000 Christians died in Nigeria this year. That's twice as many as last year. The whole last year, it's doubled already by June. We need to pray for them. We need to pray for the ones that are on furlough. We need to pray for the ones that, that come home, that are, retire, and they've been on the field for 30 years. Think about this for a second. You just left Germany. This is uh, Brother Brown. We've, we've, my church has actually supported him before I got there. All right? But he came home. Uh, churches dropped their support because he's retired. Think about leaving everything you got and you have to go to another you have to go to another state and start all over Let, let's drop your income down to 10% how will that work well yes I was a missionary for 39 and a half years I, I have a heart for that but I know that my God can handle it but you miss a blessing let me tell you I am privileged tonight to be here like I said, I was 14 the first time I got to preach here. I don't know how many of you know this, but I was deaf until I was seven years old and I could read lips really well. Uh, and a church started praying for me, the doctors to have wisdom. I could read lips, but I was deaf. They did this. That's probably not a problem unless you're a lip reader. I said, if you'll move your hands, I'll be able to hear you. They didn't find out I had dyslexia until I was 28 years old. You know what the problem is with the, you don't read well and you don't spell well, okay? It was a struggle in school. God calls me at 14 to preach. I can barely read on a third grade level. Is God crazy? No, faithful is he who calleth you who also will do it. I thought I'd be the only preacher that couldn't read. That ain't how it worked. My God is awesome. Amen. Now, he sent me to Somali, East Africa. He sent me to Brazil. Hey, he, he, I was in Canada. I was here raising support for six years, making it to Alaska. A lot of churches, well, we already got a missionary in Alaska. We don't need another one. Really? Alaska is one-fifth the size of continental United States. Think about it that way. The, the, the borough is like a, like a county. They call it a borough up there. The county and the borough I live in is just a little smaller than West Virginia. OK? 
Okay, just to give you a perspective. The town that I, I was a missionary in for 29 years, now I'm still there, I'm the pastor, but for 29 years I had many churches drop my support. Why aren't you got the church support? I thank you, you didn't. And the deal is, all the people that I got to minister to, the Bible tells us if you give a cup of water to a, a, a prophet, you have the prophet's reward. You prayed for us. You helped us. You came up there at least twice, maybe three times to help us out. Man, if you haven't gone on a mission trip, even if it's just across Michigan and there's another missionary over, go do it for a week. It'll change your life. But let me tell you, as a missionary, I, I was in a little church. I was in a little town of 2,300 people. It's a bedroom community, or it's called the Slope. That's where the oil is. They go up there for two weeks. They come back for two weeks, all those kind of things. But it's transit. People are coming and going. And I struggled over that because I would see people saved. I'd baptize them. I'd disciple them, and then they'd move away. Well, I had a man... Uh, at least two of you know Roy from being in Alaska. God took him home two years ago. But I met Roy in the prison ministry in 03. 04, he got out, and he was with me all that time. And I, this man was rough around the edges, but I watched that man grow tremendously. But he had been counting for 10 years. I think it was, it was either uh, 04 or 05 is when he started counting. And I will say it's 05 to, to 2015. He said, Pastor, you don't understand. He said, you get them saved, you get them baptized, you teach them how to serve God, and then God moves them someplace else. When you, he said, in 10 years, 200 people like that went through our church. But our church still wasn't supported, uh, in full support. Now, 2019, uh, uh, God worked it all out. And we went self-supporting, and they voted 100% that I should stay and be their pastor. So his will was pretty obvious that way. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. God is working in a mighty way. Uh, be in prayer for us. Uh, there was a lot of people go, uh, you got 40, 50 people, and you're going self-supporting? Yes. Uh, can they support you? God can. And he has. And, and God is awesome. And... Uh, last November the 14th, we, uh, God had given us another church building, and we started another church in 2014. What if everybody goes there? Well, we have started over five times in the 29 years because of fire, because of all kinds of things. Uh, God's got it covered, so I'd ask you to pray for us. But what, what I'm sharing with you is there's a lot of things going on. And we may think that God is first place in our life. But it's amazing when tra tragedy comes, struggles come, we'll find out if he's really one or not. 2014, some of you know this. Maybe most of you know this. I had a stroke. I couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't tell you my name. Uh, uh, the third day in in intensive care, I rolled over. My wife, Linda, was looking out the window crying. I said, Linda, what's wrong? She said, what's your name? I said, Doug, why? She said, it's the first time you got mine and yours right in three days. I had to learn to walk again. It came quickly. Praise the Lord. That's only God because I've had lots of friends that didn't have that privilege. Why me? I have no idea. But... Our God is awesome. I get to preach. I get to do what I love doing. And I'll tell you one thing. Let's go to Psalms uh -huh, uh, 37. Psalms 37. <clears throat> I want to start with verse 1. Psalm 37, verse 1. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. I want to stop right there. Trust in the Lord. Why? Because he's number one. See, when my stroke, I thought I had a good relationship with God. 
After my stroke, it's got really improved. But I'll tell you, spiritually, I had the head knowledge. Uh, I could take you to the right places in the Bible and, and show you, but it had to be back in my heart. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. We can put on the act here and say all the right things. But I literally had to fight sin that I had taken care of years ago after my stroke. <coughs> Excuse me. But trust in the Lord. Well, what came back to mind, our God is awesome. In Somalia, I got paid once in six months. But God provided. Literally, the missionaries were coming to me and borrowing money because they didn't have enough to do different things that they had to do. How did that work? God. I lived in a socialist Muslim republic. They checked all the mail. I mean, uh, you have not been in a communist, socialist, or Muslim probably in your life. But they had opened up all my, the mail. But mine wasn't, well, if they did, they didn't send it. But mine wasn't open. It came with U.S. currency in it, you know. Our God is awesome. He takes care of it. Trust in the Lord and do good, and so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Do we trust, or are we waiting for a rainy day? Well, I got this over here because, well, it may be over there so you can share it. But what do we do? Is it on fear or is it because God is providing so we can help other people out? Trust in the Lord and do good and so shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. When we moved from Canada to Michigan, we lived in Remus and we were at a little mission church. And my support went from $1,375 a month, this was in 1985, down to $350 and rent was $300. And I wish my electric bill was $66 now, but I was, uh, see, am I already overdrafted? Never. To this day, I have no idea how God provided. All the bills got paid. We never went without. Food, oh, did we have everything? No, but we lived on 20 acres on a lake. You know, our, our God is awesome. Linda's unsaved uncle would come to our house and go, he was a vice president for Kodak, okay? So he, money wasn't a, a problem to him. He goes, how can you live in so many wonderful places? He'd been up to the places that we lived in Canada when we were in Toronto, all those kind of things. He goes, you live in better, nicer places than I can buy in New York. You know what I got to do? I got to tell him how good my God is. Faithful is he who calleth you who also will do it. We struggle. You know, well, you don't understand. I may not, but I know somebody that does. And he knows right where you're at. And he says, faithful is he who calleth you who also will do it. See, could I, could I be a preacher? Not on your life. He can make you that. Whatever he wants you to do. He ain't calling everybody to be a missionary. He may be calling you to help a missionary, pray for a missionary, go see a missionary, write him a letter or write her a letter. Let me tell you, the pastor's wife and the missionary's wife's got the hardest job. The, the preacher stands up and he preaches, and yes, he loves the Lord, and he loves you, and he wants you to understand Jesus Christ just like he does. That's what it's all about. But his wife has to go through all kinds of things. I'm going to tell you that she's the most vulnerable person in the church, not because she's weak. Because she loves her husband and she loves you. And literally people come and tell my wife what they would like me to preach. I don't know if that happens to pastor or not. Or, well, pastor didn't say this right. Or do you know what those people over there are doing? What kind of dress is that? All kinds of strange things that a pastor's wife has to go through. If you can't pray for me, just pray for my wife. She needs it more than I do. Not because she's wicked, but because she has to put up with me. And all the other junk that she has to put up with. Pastor's wife, the same thing. That lady does more than I. She's amazing. You know? Pray for her. Think about her. Encourage her any way you can. Faithful is he who calleth you who also will do it. Trust in the Lord and do good. Why? Fret not. What's fret and worry? Why do we worry? Because we fear. 
See, I was taught that fear was an emotion. I didn't know what the Bible calls it. You can look it up in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, All right, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and of a sound mind. What did I just say it was? It's a spirit. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. There is a spiritual battle here, folks, and the devil wants to deceive you. And we can go to uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter uh, 5 and verse 7, and it tells us that we have an adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. What's he trying to do? How does a, a lion, oh, like a roaring lion? He isn't one. He's a deceiver. He's a counterfeiter. Okay? Who is the lion of the tribe of Judah? Who is that? It's Jesus. Who is he counterfeiting? Jesus. Okay? How does a lion work? Uh, don't, don't go to your TV and tell me how a lion works, okay? A lion works. The male lion goes up on a hill. The wind is in his back. What is down here? His prey. The, the gazelles. Do they smell him? Absolutely. Do they know that he's there? Yes. What does he do? Oh, wait a second. Where are the other lions at? Does anybody know what they call a bunch of lions together? Pride. The pride. Oh, wait a second. God resisted the proud, but give a grace to the humble. Okay? Where's the pride? It's over here. The lion roars. Where does the gazelles run? To their pride. Ain't that interesting how the Bible works? Be careful. It's a warning. Where do we run when we're afraid? Do we run to God? Do we trust him? Verse 4. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of thine heart. Delight. That's the point. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of your heart. If you went to Psalms 106, it tells us that he gave them the desire of their heart to the leanness of their soul. Do you know what they, was, they were talking about? We have this awful manna, God. We're sick of this manna, God. We want meat. Wait a second. Remember when God told Moses he said, I'm going to feed them meat. Moses goes, are you going to kill all the animals? Oh, wait a second. They had meat, didn't they? Oh, but they didn't want to eat their meat. God was providing manna. So God said, no problem. But it tells us in Psalms 106 to the leanness of their soul. So you can either delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give thee the desire of your heart because when you delight, delight yourself in the Lord, if you've been married, remember, now these couple haven't been married very long. <laughs> you know? When you fell in love with her, man, she was a delight, wasn't she? Man, you couldn't wait. Oh, remember that? That's what delight's talking about. Oh, remember? Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. What is he coming back for in the rapture? The bride. You know, I go to prepare a place for you. All these kind of things. Here he is. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of thine heart. Why? Because his desire will be your desire. I had no idea how he was going to make me a preacher. God does peculiar things. But you know what? He asks you to be a peculiar people. Zealous of good works. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. It's him that does it. Without him, you can do nothing. If you went to John 15, 5. It says, without him, you can do... You know what? I used to preach on that verse. You know what happened when I had a stroke? I learned that verse a lot better. When I'm laying in bed, and all the verses are gone... And the fourth day, I get one back for three months. I'm looking at a wall just about that color. I haven't started walking yet, and I get Psalms 46.10. Anybody know what Psalms 46.10 is? Will somebody look it up for me? Psalms 46.10. Yes. Be still and know that I am God. Yes. Be still. You know what? It wasn't really hard for me to be still. 
I couldn't walk. That was the only verse I had for three months. And you've heard me quote verses. You go, man, that's easy for you. Uh-uh. Remember I got dyslexia? It's hard to work. The last one that I, I, I memorized was, was Hebrews 2, uh, 1. Therefore, I get therefore and wherefore mixed up, so I might have it backwards, but therefore, take heed to what you have heard, lest at any time you should let it slip. You know it. Good. Fantastic. Took me a year to memorize that one. I'm sure, do I have it close? Fantastic. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's hard work. We're in a battle. That man right there, how many of you have been in the military? Okay, were you at war? Were you in Vietnam? No, he was. I was in Somalia. We were 50 miles from the front lines. The, the MiGs flew over and tried to blow up the bridge that we drove over. <coughs> I had AK-47s pointed at me so many times I can't tell you. I had a, a 50 shot right in front of me and it stopped at the bumper. Were they stopping it or do we have an awesome God? We have an awesome God. Do I get to minister to people? No, I wasn't in the military. I was, I was a servant of God. But because God put me there, I get to minister to men and women that have great struggles because they come back and they ain't the same. And people have no idea what to do with them. My God does. He takes care of things. I was in a men's retreat. How much time do I have, Pastor? Okay, I'll try to wind this up quickly. I was at a men's retreat. Where did Russia invade a couple months ago? The Ukraine. There was a missionary that was sharing what was going in. And he had to leave his church because it was so close to what, where Russia was at and how they were ministering there. And yes, but he said three or four times, it ain't your money I'm looking for I'm at your prayers. And they were talking about this and different people were saying, and I said, listen, he needs your prayers. And somebody laughed. I'm sorry, I didn't have a really good attitude. They have never been in a war zone. When an AK-57 is laid across your hood and it's pointing right at you, it changes your perspective a lot. People would go, well, did they pull the trigger? I have no idea, but I can tell you one thing, it didn't go off. How much do you trust your God? And God's given me blessings that I get to minister to men that came home from Vietnam, that people spit and did all kinds of terrible things to them. I'm going to try to get you some stuff that a lady wrote from my church. That, that It talks about we love the men that came home. Some of them didn't get that privilege. And the ones that didn't struggled. The ones that did come home struggled. There's all these things going on. The missionaries have some of those same kind of struggles that you're going through. Their life is on the line all the time. Can we trust God? What is the world going to do? It's going to go to one world government. How do I know? It's right here in my book. What is Russia doing? It's right here in my book. Uh, how many times does Israel got to vote in a new prime minister? They're at it again. The last one in a, in a week or two weeks is going to step down. Oh. Is our God awesome? Yes, he is. Don't let the devil deceive you. He is a liar. There's no truth in him. That's John 8, 44. And Jesus was talking to the religious leaders, the Pharisees. He said, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He's a murderer from the beginning, and you abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own because he's the father of it. So when the lies come flying, where did they come from? We need to discern the truth. The truth will set you free. 
Commit thy ways, verse 5, commit thy ways unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and the judgment as the new, thy judgment as the noonday. What's right and wrong? That's your judgment. He will show you the direction he wants you to go. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. So if I sh shut that down just a little bit, it told you a lot. Don't, don't fret. If you're struggling with fear, look it up in a, in a Strong's Concordance. Because probably your phone may have a concordance on it, but it doesn't do as well as the Strong's does. Look it up. Start following it. Start in Genesis. Run all the way through about fear. We don't have to fear. Except God. And we get them those things turned around. He says, fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. Fear of God is to shun evil. But that's not the world's teaching of fear. If we fear God, that means whatever he tells us to do, we can do. Because he's going to do it. Faithful is he who calleth you who also will do it. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. Anyway, when I, I, I think I'm out of time. But our God, get into the book. Everything and everybody is going to call you when you want to sit down and read it. Just don't read it. Study the book. Get into it. Learn how much God loves you. Because he does. You know the biggest thing I deal with Christians? I don't think God loves me. Perfect love casts us out fear because fear hath torment, and he that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he... All right, so we got to learn how to love by who? Him. Not just that he loved us and he sent his son, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's a lot bigger than that, people. Love your neighbor as yourself. And some of us have a hard time loving ourselves, so we have a hard time loving our wives because he tells us to do the same thing. Love your neighbor as yourself. Why don't we love us? Oh, because we're just, oh, if you only, no, no. My God knows everything, don't he? Jesus Christ took care of all of that. Romans uh, 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. But when we're not doing what, uh, what we believe God wants us to do and we look in the mirror, how much condemnation do you have? Is that loving yourself? What did he die for? This body ain't going to heaven, folks. It's a soul that lives forever. Can we love that? Not the arrogant way. See, I had that problem for a long time. It's in 1 Timothy. It's self-love. And they're selfish and they're arrogant and they want their own way. That ain't what it's talking about at all. That ain't how Jesus loves you. He gave it all away. Philippians 2. We got a great God, folks. Don't get discouraged. Uh, evil? Yep, yep. Oh, he says it. In me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We got a great God. What do you want me to do next, Pastor? Okay. Quick update. Okay. Update from Jack. All right. Amount of surgery that went better than expected. Yes. God is so good. He absolutely did a marvelous work. Yes. Thank you for prayers. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so I'll call Jeff a little bit, but for it to be a marvelous work from Jeff, God did a great work. Amen. So, you know, whereabouts in Colorado are the four pounds? I don't know that. Okay. I don't know where for sure. They're about 50 miles from the camp. The campsite, wherever they were camped out. Oh, that's just our third four pounds that are part of one that didn't get. All right, let me pray. I'll pray this message today. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for our brother Doug and Lord, his message tonight for us, Lord, through your word. And Lord, help us to trust you. Lord, help us not to fear. Help us to turn our eyes to you, Lord, in times of trial and, Lord, in times of difficulty in our life. God, we do thank you for this update on Tom. And, Lord, just praying you now heal his body, continue to work, Lord, uh, so, Lord, this would not hinder their trip any farther. Lord, they have a great time together as a family. 
Bless us as we leave, Lord. Keep us safe as we go home. Bring us back forward to Lord on Sunday. Looking forward to serving you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.